In a world where AI is allowed, how do all students get access to the tools that make their education a better experience? And so BudaBox enables all of that. All right. So today we're talking with the co-founder of BudaVox, Franz Hong, um, and we're going to be getting specifically into uh, higher education and AI. Um, but for those who aren't familiar with BudaBox, could you kind of start us there? Yes. So BudaBox is AI for everyone, whether you're brand new to generative AI or you're an experienced hand, whether you work by yourself or you work with a team. BudaBox is the platform for your go-to Gen AI needs. So what is AI collaboration and what? how does that apply to higher education? Yeah, AI collaboration is the ability to accelerate innovation and productivity by combining people and AIs and knowledge in one place so that they can all work together. And I think it's particularly applicable to higher education because higher education is having a moment. Higher educators are wondering what is their role in a world where generative AI exists? And it's not going away. Uh, there was a study shown that students are twice as likely to use generative AI than faculty. And even more interesting, students were asked, would you continue to use generative AI even if it was banned? And three out of four students said they would. So generative AI has a moment now in higher education and higher education is having a moment with generative AI. And they have to figure out what to do with this. And collaborative AI is an answer to the things that higher education is, is struggling with, right? How do I allow generative AI in the classroom in a way that helps versus hinders the educational process? How do I figure out student work from AI work? Does that matter? Um, how do I grade, right? And I think uh, really interestingly, we've had a number of conversations with faculty and administrators and they're really concerned about equitable access. Um, in a world where AI is allowed, how do all students get access to the tools that make their education a better experience? And so BudaBox enables all that. It enables equitable access. It enables academic integrity. It enables grading. Um, it enables access to a diversity of AI tools all in one place. So. Um, not only is it just AI for everybody, right? It's AI for every faculty. It's AI for every student. That's very interesting. And is there like specific affinity on a subject basis? I'm thinking about professors who might be teaching English, might be into mathematics or engineering. Yeah, certainly AI, the first departments that we've talked to that are being affected by generative AI are certainly writing departments, right? Because how do I teach writing in a world where a student can enter a prompt and get an essay? Now, that's the output, right? What's the process? And some of the most innovative faculty have figured out that AI can actually enhance the writing process, but it's a process, right? You've got to introduce AI after a student has mastered the fundamentals, and then you, you teach them to use AI as a, a, as a colleague in a collaborative way. Um, and then you take the training wheels off and you let them use generative AI fully. But one of the challenges is how do I, how do I grade, how do I understand what a student does BoodleBox is building tools into our platform that make it possible for faculty who are allowing the use of generative AI to peer into that box and see the work that students are doing, see how students are collaborating with generative AI, and essentially show their work with generative AI, which is uh, one of the things that has uh, been kind of a sticking point for academics in terms of the use of AI. Yeah, sure. And could you maybe like walk me through a few of those use cases? Like would a, a professor use this during a lecture? Would they use this just after the lecture? How do they actually use it in their work? Yeah, so in a world with generative AI in the classroom and for classwork, there's a number of potential use cases. And obviously there's one where, hey, you tell a student they can use it for their writing assignment, but they have to disclose what they do. That's a very common uh, application right now. And so you know, in the case of BoodleBox, a student could use any of the AI tools we have available, we, we literally have thousands, right? Over a thousand uh, AI helpers. Um, the students can use those to generate ideas, generate a draft, revise it. They could then save all that to a folder that get, then gets shared with the instructor. And then the instructor then could essentially see the work the student has done with the generative AI. Um, I read an interesting, or I saw an interesting post today that said, Maybe we should gauge students not on just the output, but the quality of the work that went into the output. Like, let's look at the chat logs. Let's look at their prompting. Like, let's, let's maybe grade them on their 
use of AI and not just what they produce. An interesting thought. There are lots of different ways to approach this problem. BoodleBox enables a professor to have those options so that they can pick and choose what approach works best for them. Yeah, sure. And I guess maybe this is a bit of a digression, but could you actually walk me through like some of the friction points that a professor would get hung up on when they're starting to use a platform like BoodleBox? Yeah, I, it's not just BoodleBox. It's all AI, right? I think the number one thing that higher education faculty are struggling with is they're just not familiar with generative AI. You know, like I mentioned earlier, students are twice as likely right now to use generative AI than faculty. And so faculty are playing catch up, right? Their students know the technology better than them. That's an awkward place to be. Second, even if you start to learn about the technology, how do I actually use it? What are the use cases? And for a lot of faculty, they're like, well, I don't really need this. I know how to teach already. I don't need to use generative AI. The truth of the matter is, whether you use generative AI or not, the students are using it. So it's being used in your classroom and for class work. Second, I think there are a number of higher education faculty that are concerned about student over-reliance, right? I want students to think for themselves. If I allow them to use AI, is the AI going to do the thinking for the student? So that's a, that's a teaching issue, right? In terms of how, what is the educational process look like when we teach um, with AI and we allow students to use AI? It's probably not dissimilar to what happened when the first calculator came out, right? Like how do I teach math in a world where the calculator exists? Well, it turns out we still teach math and we still have calculators and it works out okay. And maybe the methodology should be similar. You know, at, when we first learn a subject, you don't allow the use of AI, right? The student needs to learn to use it themselves, um, or sorry, needs to learn the process themselves. And then over time, you let them use more and more AI and show their work. And in doing so, the students don't become over-reliant. Third is this concern about academic integrity. How do I differentiate between AI work and student work? Does it matter? Um, is there issues of, of plagiarism? Is there issues of bias? How do I respect the fair use of intellectual property? And so we're building things in BoodleBox that enable faculty to uh, preserve academic integrity and in work by being able to show what is student work versus AI work. If, if the professor cares about that. Fourth, just a lack of training and support. Um, I've had over 50 conversations with higher education faculty and administrators in the last few weeks. Uh, there is an overwhelming uh, need for faculty training and support. They just don't know how to effectively, ethically, and responsibly integrate generative AI into the classroom and for class work. And that's a training issue. And there are institutions who are leaning into it we're going to lean into it as well. Uh, we're kicking off the Boodle AI Collaborative AI Accelerator for higher education. It's a mouthful, but essentially it's a series of webinars and courses and certifications that will do two things. First, it'll get faculty comfortable with generative AI. And second, it'll enable those faculty to help their students responsibly use generative AI in the classroom and for classwork. And lastly, there's this issue of grading. At the end of the day, you know, Professors have to grade. Grading is work. How do I grade in a world of AI? And uh, we're getting a lot of feedback and input from professors on the kind of tools and capabilities that they'd want to help with grading and enable grading in a world of AI. And we're building those into BoodleBox now. Yeah, sure. That's very interesting. Is the train of thought around actually looking at the chat logs and marking the prompting that you can see the proof of work? Like I have a background in engineering and when you're solving engineering problems on a page, or at least when we did it, you know, eight years ago, 80% um, of the marks were for the work and whether you got to the right answer or not was a little bit, you know, maybe 20% of the grade. Is that, that the idea behind why you want to see or mark on the actual prompt logs? There's certainly a range of opinions on this from higher education. Some folks are, I don't care what they produce. I'm just going to grade the output. Other folks are like, you can use AI, but you just have to cite it. Other folks want to see the prompts. But I think you're right. I think there's a move towards, I want to see the work, right? And, and one of the reasons why faculty aren't allowing AI is because they can't see the work. If I allow the use of AI, all I see is the output. Or even if you give me the prompt, that's a lot of work, right? I have to, and as we know, prompts don't produce the same thing uh, every single time you prompt. We're going to 
help enable this kind of transparency by creating a system where students can save their chats to a folder, share it with a professor, and the professor can look inside that folder and see all the work, right? And so if they want to include that in the grading, they can. We're even thinking about a system that besides professors having to qualitative look in, maybe we can provide some quantitative analysis as well. In this folder, there is work from one student. Um, they've done 180 prompts. It's 120,000 words, and they spent one hour and 55 minutes on this AI work, and they use 16 different AI. If a professor wants to include that kind of quantitative analysis in their grading. Yeah, sure. That's interesting. So I guess one thing I'm curious about, and I'm curious about this because I've been through this process before, but is there a world where students can engage with a prompt thread with the lecture kind of at a, a scale basis, like a few hundred people in a classroom type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the world of collaborative AI, right? Multiple people, multiple AIs, multiple sources of knowledge in one discussion. And so uh, people, have, people have said Boodlebox is like Slack on crack with AI. Um, we have had threads with over a hundred people in them. So you certainly could open up a, what we call a group chat thread in Boodlebox, open it up to the entire class and have an entire class interact with one another, with the AIs and with knowledge. So you can imagine a world, for example, where uh, a group, right, is working on a particular uh, piece of material in a course and they literally just upload um, the course textbook or the course syllabus. And they're able to ask it questions um, to help basically supplement their learning. Now, there's a fine line, right? And I think as anybody listening to that says, well, what's the point of education? If I can just ask the question and get an answer. Well, I think the higher, educate, higher educators I'm talking to, they believe education needs to evolve and take into consideration the fact that AI can do those things anymore, right? Um, once the calculator existed, we no longer test people just on pure arithmetic with a calculator. There's no point in that, right? We ask them harder and harder problems. So when I was in, uh, when I was at West Point, uh, we had a mathematical piece of software called Derive. And Derive could do all these great kind of higher order mathematical functions. But the way it worked was you weren't allowed to use Derive functions until you demonstrated the ability to do something manually first. Once you demonstrate it, then you're allowed to use Derive on it, and then they didn't care. So, you know, in a, in a ca classroom setting, I can imagine having a huge group thread. You put in the course materials. People are asking questions and pulling the information out to help supplement their learning. But the testing, right, is going to have to be something that goes above and beyond just reciting information from the text, right? It's going to have to involve analysis, uh, gestalting, human AI collaboration, human human collaboration with AI. And I think higher education, that, that's the challenge that higher education is facing right now. What is what does that educational process look like? Boodlebox enables that. Boodlebox enables higher education to have those options and to do that exploration. Yeah, sure. That's very interesting. So uh, you mentioned that you've been talking to many educators. Was there a gap that you experienced, maybe something you thought would be super important to them that you were surprised by or vice versa? So I think the things that arose from talking to educators, I wasn't aware of, right? There's, there's two things. First is just the importance of grading, right? Like, let's face it, grading is not fun right? No one signs up to be a, a professor because I love grading, right? And so AI, enabling AI, right, in the classroom and for class work complicates grading. And I think there's, there is an open question about how do we grade in a world of AI? And we're, we're building features and tools into Boodlebox that take into account the fact that professors can grade. And if they want, can make grading uh, an easier process. Now, at the end of the day, AI can't be the end all say all of grading, right? The professor is responsible for the grade, but like other endeavors, right? AI takes the drudgery out. Like can AI get you from a zero to 80% solution of grading um, in a way that respects academic integrity so that the professor can put in the human touch at the end. So that's the first thing, grading. The second thing is this idea of equitable access. In a world where AI is allowed for academic work, if one student has access to better AI, is that an issue for the other students who don't have that access, right? Whether it's because of 
you know, economic means or whatever. And I've talked to a number of academics who really feel that this equitable access to good AI is a, is a brewing issue for, for higher education. Um, you know, we have built a platform that allows everyone to use AI and, and use it affordably. We have access to all the top models uh, in one place, whether it's OpenAI's GPT-4.0 or Claude 3 from Anthropic or Perplexity um, or uh, Gemini uh, 1.5 Pro, they're all on the platform. Um, to buy them separately would be $100 or more, right? And we allow access to that for a fraction of that cost. And so there's been a number of institutions that love the fact that we provide access to all those tools in one place and for an affordable cost. If an educator is in a school system, how do they start to go about getting it into their classroom, getting it into their faculty? Where's the starting point and what does that roadmap kind of look like for them? Yeah, we'd encourage you to first start with training, right? So we have launching this collaborative AI accelerator for higher education. Uh, you can visit boodlebox.ai slash education and see the sign up for that and, and get free training uh, and free access to the platform for higher education faculty. It's our investment um, in higher education. Second, uh, we have a, a program where you can get this into the classroom or your department or your school affordably. And you'll see contact information on boodlebox.ai slash education that shows you how to sign up for our discount program. And third, um, just reach out and contact us, ed at boodle.ai or my email, france at boodle.ai and would be happy to have a conversation. We have created a leadership council of higher educators who are interested in collaborative AI and want to advance it. And we're actively looking for people to join the council and contribute. Yeah, fantastic. I think that's probably coming to a good stopping point. But before we hop off the call, is there anything interesting that you've learned as you've started to work with more and more educators that we haven't covered? No, I think I think all the cool points have been made, Jack. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm out of cool points for today. Okay. No, that's great. Well, I appreciate the conversation. Thanks for sharing that. I think if you are a college educator or a faculty, this is probably a great starting point, even just to dip your toe in and learn something new. And you guys put out a lot of free education that uh, is very easily accessed. So thanks for hopping on call, friends. Thanks for sharing that with me. Otherwise, anything you want to plug? Nope. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Bye.